Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to be looking at the Glimmer Hot Foil System from Spellbinders and I'm going to be taking a look at the machine, what it does, tips and tricks and all those things. So this is the machine. It's not super big. I would say the actual surface of the hot plate is about five by seven. So this machine here heats up with this piece that is removable, that is a hot surface. So you gotta be careful. It tells you all the things you have to look out for in the instruction booklet. Here's the instruction booklet and it has step-by-step -step picture instructions on what you can do what kind of shims you add and what kind of materials you can work with. So with this machine you can foil on cardstock, watercolor paper, chipboard, fabric, ribbon, and leather. And I'm sure it does even more than that if you wanted to give it a try. It has all the step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do in order to work with the different materials. Now Spellbinders has come out with a quite a few dies to go with this machine. Now I want to make it clear that you can use a variety of die cutting machines with this but you need a die cutting machine in order to use this hot foil system. So keep that in mind. Now with this you can use both the Spellbinders dies that were created for this platform or you can use your regular dies as well but they are going to look a little bit different than what you're used to and I'll show you what I mean by that. So the dies that were created specifically for the Glimmer Hot Foil system are a debossed look. So what that means is it's going to make an imprint into your cardstock if you were to run this through like a regular die. However, we're not going to be running this through a die machine like a regular die at the moment, but that is something that you are able to do with these. So the first technique I'm going to do is using the Glimmer Hot Foil System with these Glimmer plates. Now this is what these are called. They're not die cuts. They make impressions, so they don't cut. That's important to know. So what you need to do is you need to turn on your machine and you'll see that the power button will come on and will turn green when the machine is ready to go. You're going to hit that white button there when you add your glimmer plate to the top of the surface. Now the surface is hot and you can see that my green light is blinking. Now when my green light stops blinking, that's when I can add my foil. So what it's doing right now is it's actually heating up the glimmer plate or that what looks like a die itself. So it gets extremely hot. Once the light stops flashing, then you can go ahead and add your foil. Now Spellbinders has tons of different colors available on their website as well. So I'm going to add the foil to the top of my glimmer plate here, and I'm going to add my cardstock on top or whatever material it is that you're going to be using. You're then going to go ahead and check the bottom piece of the machine or of the instruction guide sorry and it's going to tell you what kind of plate you need so you need a glimmer spacer pad and don't worry all of the accessories that come with this are labeled with a picture in case you don't know what they look like now for me personally I happen to misplace my glimmer spacer pad for some reason it just looks like a regular clear cutting plate as far as what I remember from the first time using it but I seem to have misplaced it so I used a regular die cutting pad and then I used the thin shim to go with it and that seemed to work with no issues. So you can see how that foiled using the turquoise foil with no issues. So I just removed that piece from my Glimmer Hot Foil machine and put it through my Platinum 6 die cutting machine. This also works with most die cutting machines on the market. Now I am not going to show the part where it goes into the die cutting machine after every time that I foil. I'm only going to show you what I use for the foil itself. Um, just so you know that that's what you have to do. You have to insert it in your die cutting machine, roll it back and forth, and you're good to go. So this piece is detachable as you saw from the beginning of the video and you'll see me put it back in. So what I found most helpful to do is actually to put the piece that detaches from the machine directly back into its base in order to prevent myself from burning myself. And what I like about the tweezers that it comes with is the tweezers are also magnetic so it holds on to the hot dye and I just wait until it cools just give it a minute or two before taking it off. Now one of the questions that was asked the most when this first came out was does it work with regular dyes and the answer is yes but not in the way that you think. 
So let's try it out. So this die here I've used in a previous video. It is a background die actually, and it is a layering die on top of it. So I grabbed the most intricate layer, and what this does is it's going to foil any of the areas it would have normally cut. So you're going to get not thick flower lines, you're going to get very thin lines when you do this. I'm just giving you a heads up so you know exactly how it works with the regular die cuts. So I added that to my, my machine, I hit that white button there on the left hand side at the bottom, and now my timer is going off and you can see that it's blinking so that means the die isn't ready. The die is currently heating up. And once it stops flashing, it is ready. This takes approximately 30 to 45 seconds, I would say, in real life. Now I'm going to go ahead and add that foil shimmer side down to the top of my die. And then I'm going to add my cardstock over top. And just as I did before, I'm going to add the necessary shims or spacer pads based on the material that I'm working with. And I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine. When you run it through your die cutting machine, just note that you won't have as much pressure going through the machine as you would with a normal die cut. So it goes through very, very lightly and that's quite normal. Now when I was finished running it through my machine, I just go ahead and slide it right back into its base. It just clicks in easily there. I'll remove my shims and then I'll go ahead and lift the foil from the cardstock. And you'll see that I have this beautiful foiled outline on my cardstock. And don't forget, you could use the negative on the foil as well for future cards. I'm going to go ahead and remove that there carefully with my tweezers. Don't forget about that. The die is hot. Now one other thing you can do with these types of dies from Spellbinders, this is another one of those glimmer plates where you can see the impression is actually raised in the die, is that you can use it for letterpress of course as well, which means making just a debossed look into your cardstock. It's completely up to you how you want to use them, but I just wanted to mention that there are multifunctional uses for these glimmer plates. Don't just think that you're buying glimmer plates that can't die cut and they, all you can do with them is foil. That's not the case at all. So I'm adding this best day ever one from Spellbinders. I'm going to go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine once more. This time I'm going to use a different color foil. And now that I've taken it out, you can see this is where the magic happens and the dies just go so neatly. Now you can also do multi colors of different foils on top of your machine. It's not going to uh, affect it in any way. So for example, I did this look and sharp sort of look where I did the sentiment in one color and the cacti in another color. So I'll show you how I did that. I went ahead just as I did before. I added my sentiment, clicked the button, waited for the button to stop flashing, and then I went ahead and added my foil. I'm just putting you on a little bit of a faster speed here just to speed through the process because this is what I've done on the last couple of different ideas. You can see I have my die cutting machine there off to the side because this does take quite a bit of space. So that's all finished and what I'm going to do now is probably the smarter thing would have been to leave the die on there so I could use that for placement of the cacti. And then I'm going to remove my sentiment from there Make sure my die cuts, of course, are facing the right side up. Add foil in a different color this time and then go ahead and reapply my cardstock. Now what I love about the surface of this hot plate is that it has grids as well as measurements on there so it's easy to line up your cards when you put your material on there. That was one of the things I had originally thought of when I had first started using this machine was that maybe they were going to be crooked or I wouldn't know how to get it centered but then I noticed those grid lines and measurement marks and it was just fine. I wanted to show you as well one of the glimmer plates that the machine does actually come with. It comes with this frame and a sentiment as well. And I'm going to be using gold in order to add this to my card front. I ended up cutting it out because it wasn't super center. I think things had kind of shifted a little bit when I had touched it or added the plates on top. So I just wanted to show you what this one looks like that actually comes with the machine. Now in the meantime I wanted to talk about some tips and tricks and techniques uh, in order in case you're running into any troubleshooting. So if your foil happens to be curling up on the edges all you need to do is cut the corners of the foil and then that will prevent it from curling up. 
When you're putting it through your platinum die cutting machine or whichever die cutting machine you're using, make sure to roll it slowly through the machine. When you place your glimmer plate on your foil, you can trace an outline on the foil using a marker, but be generous with that outline. Do cut it slightly bigger. And then you can go ahead and cut it. So if you happen to be getting any sort of stray foil on your cardstock, you might want to cut your foil down to the exact size of the glimmer plate or the die cut itself. Once again, just make sure that you read all the instructions because it can be quite hot, so I don't want you burning any of your fingers. And lastly, always use your tweezers when you're removing them from the glimmer plate machine. So I hope you enjoyed my little review on how this machine works. Don't forget to leave a comment over on my blog for a chance to win a $50 gift certificate to Spellbinders. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will do my very best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching everyone. And as I learn more about this machine, I'm sure you'll see it more often. Bye now.